All right, Candace. So uh, give us an update. What's happening today with the investigation? So as we spoke, all of the court documents are going to be released today, or the police documents, I should say. The court documents have been out there. Um, and we're just, we're trying to get awareness out there. We'll put the link on to your page so people can go look at them. We are trying to head off people wanting to analyze them in ways and say they got the wrong person. It isn't what it is. Um, you know how that goes. So um, personally, I've seen the phone data, which I shared with you, which is absolutely amazing. Um, but other than that, I don't know what else is in it until we look at it. But um, we want to use Dylan's case for education. So we're asking people when these documents are available later today, please look at them, use them for education, but don't speculate on them. James Brenner admitted to murdering Dylan. James Brenner's guns matched the bullet holes in Dylan's skull. It is what it is. We can use this for a greater good in educating more people, especially the phone data. Um, I was talking with John Lorden, a few others. I think this is one of the first cases that the actual raw data has been released for people to learn from, mate. We need to learn from this. We need to educate our law enforcement. We need to teach them that there are programs out there that will analyze this data for them. And first and foremost, we need to teach them that this data exists. I get so much backlash from police departments when I say, hey, did you get their internet data? And then I hear, well, I got their phone pings. And I'll say, no, their data. Um, when this is released, you're going to see Dylan open TikTok, Dylan open Safari to look at the weather. And that screenshot of the weather is actually on the slide presentation. Um, it's everything. And it just shows the difference between pings and data. And we really need to educate people on this. So uh, for, it is for people... Yeah, it is. Sorry to cut you off there. For people wondering why this is coming out, is that after an investigation is done and a case has moved through court, all of the records are public information. Well, almost all, unless a judge seals them or they were part of a plea agreement where some of them agreed to be sealed or whatnot. So basically, this is the prosecutor's office saying, here's all the information we had, right? Yeah. And well, and, and, and I will tell you, it is not everything. Um, there is some stuff that is held back. Um, the video, the time lapse video will not be public. Um, some certain documents won't. Um, but as the prosecuting attorney told me, they, they've had thousands of requests. Well, the only reason people are requesting these documents is because they want to analyze them and try to prove them wrong. And I'm asking people, please don't do that. It is, it is re-victimizing us as a family again. Don't do that. Now, if you want to analyze them and use them for education, please do that. But, but don't start coming at us and saying, well, I don't think it was James Brenner. And I don't think he acted alone because he did. So that's why I want to be the one. I'll share the link. Everybody's welcome to look at them. It's public information. Use them for education in cases you're working with. Um, but don't analyze them and try to say we got the wrong guy. So Candace, uh, you said that uh, the phone data from Dylan's phone at the time of his death, or at least the last websites he he was looking at was TikTok and the weather. Yep. And and it does show on that slide presentation exactly what time he opened TikTok, exactly what time he opened Safari, what time he called his grandma, what time she called back, trying to call James Brenner to say he was going to come through the gate, rightfully so, for the property he had permission to be on. It shows everything. It shows the latitude and longitude, all of the GPS coordinates, um, the drop in elevation, the step count of the phone. It, it is absolutely amazing information, and it's so educational, and that's how I want to keep it. I don't want people to speculate. Was there anything that surprised you that you saw in all of this or heard? I know you, you said no. you haven't seen it all until it comes out, but um, no, nothing well, surprising. Nothing surprising. And, and even when the rest of it comes out, there's not going to be anything surprising because we were there the whole time. I mean, we were right there the whole time. Um, it, my most shocking thing is, is I've had a really good grip on the data, but 
when you look through that spreadsheet, Dylan's phone was talking to that tower every three seconds. When, when you look at that calm, it's three seconds, three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. That is so important. Um, you know, unfortunately, in Dylan's case, it wouldn't have changed the outcome if we'd have had that earlier. But in some cases, it will, Nate. And that's part of the education I'm doing with Aaron and Badge App and working with the Bonneville County Police now. And um, we're going to try to get some more education. And we want to use this as a training tool. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what it is. You said the video that won't come out is the one that I think we've heard, known about for a while is um, James Brenner cleaning his gun and and there's blood uh, on him. And that that video, you said that will never be public. No, no, that will not be public. And and you'll see on you'll see the importance of this. You'll see in there it'll say Dylan's phone screen locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked before James Brenner murdered him. That's how much the data can tell you. Um, then when, when the video started, it was from a side swipe on the phone, which is what I've said from the beginning with an iPhone eight, it's a simple side swipe. Um, a time-lapse video takes a longer period of time and it puts it into a shorter, it basically decides, I guess, what's important, what's not, if there's no activity. And then when activity starts, it compresses it into a shorter video. Um, you know, people saying, well, Dylan turned his phone on because he knew he's going to be murdered. That's stupid. He just would have left the situation, right? Like you don't walk into a situation and say, hey, I'm going to be murdered. So I'm going to turn my phone on to record it. That's that's ridiculous. But as people look through this, I want them I want them to really look at it. I don't want them to analyze it and think it's something that it's not. But I want them to really look at it and see the importance of how closely that phone was tracked. It was tracked down to drop in 14 feet in elevation. It's unreal. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our law enforcement is not trained in this type of stuff. And that's what we wanna change because for somebody else who's kidnapped, lost, it could be a matter of life and death. Yeah. All right. So do you know what time it's uh, going to be available to the public, Candace? No, I'm, I'm waiting for an email back. So like you said, I got a little bit of a jump start on it. So um, yeah. sometimes. So and, and it'll it'll be a link and that link will direct people to everything. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So. Well, um, Candace, of course, you said you're getting ahead of it because there are sleuths or wannabe sleuths out there that Yes. that go through this stuff and, you know, try to poke holes in the investigation or whatever. But you heard it from Candace. She's confident in the investigation and confident in the outcome. And of course, a man who admitted to killing your son is now behind bars and Dylan has been laid to rest. Yeah. Yes. So like I said, education, not speculation, please. Yeah. All right, Candace. Thank you.